scaling your e-commerce brand in 2023 and onwards is more important than ever before not only because there's just a lot more competition now and by the way this happens month after month year after year but in addition rules are constantly changing with google ads there's new campaign types coming i mean depending on when you're watching this video in 2022 just how they all of a sudden just completely wiped out smart shopping and just came up with performance max campaigns but doing it the right way in 2023 and onwards is not only going to lead you and your e-commerce brand to a road with more revenue per month but also a road where you're enjoying a lot more profits and you're actually able to keep a lot more money while you're scaling because at the end of the day scaling only really matters if you're making profits not revenue so by the end of this video you're gonna know exactly how to scale the right way and how i am personally scaling my campaigns now the basic strategies when it comes to scaling like increasing your budgets bids etc etc they really haven't changed but we still need to kind of go through those scaling methods before i kind of introduce you the new scaling methods i will be trying out more often in 2023 let's start off with the basic method so as we already know before even starting to scale we always need to make sure that our product is scale worthy so this performance max campaign right here which is a shopping performance max campaign look at the data for all time we can see that currently there's only a handful of products which have actually gotten sales but the thing is there's also a lot more of these products which have not gotten sales so whenever i'm deciding if i want to scale any individual product or not i'm actually ranking it by most conversions to least conversions and clearly we see there's a winning product right here which is getting me sales at four dollars per sale it has got Send me a 15x ROAS. This is what you define as a clear winner. And in order to even start the scaling method, by the way, and how I'm going to be scaling, you need to have multiple kinds of products like these. So in essence, the main criteria your product needs to meet in 2023 and onwards when it comes to scaling is it has more than three to five sales and that two consistent sales. So if these five sales happen maybe four months ago and then once three months ago and then once two months ago and two times this month, this isn't really not a winning product. We cannot consider it a winning product and we do not not want to waste money on a product like this however if it was getting me sales once every two days or an ideal situation once daily or more than once daily that's a real winning product we want to then further scale but now though let's say for example these first three products are products like this first one it, they have a lot of sales what do we do now how do we continue the scale for these products the easy way to go about this is of course to kind of start a brand new campaign and by the way i take my product through three different phases however in this phase let's say this is the testing phase we want to now take it to the profitability slash scaling phase so within this phase what you are doing is whatever kind of campaign type you have we're just going to start a brand new performance max campaign so smart bidding based campaign and this campaign we're going to be running with no target roas percentage check so if we go back right here go inside this performance max campaign look at the settings we can see that this campaign as well currently has no kind of ROAS chosen for it and this is how you will launch your new scaling performance max campaign that's ideally the first kind of way to scale your products just go ahead and launch them via a performance max campaign with no kind of ROAS set just let Google do its thing because I guarantee you Google is very smart it's going to try to get you the best possible performance the best possible ROAS that it possibly can so you don't necessarily need to kind of worry about that but once you kind of launch it the basic way to scale it like I always would recommend even in my other scaling videos is just increase the budget every seven days so with a performance max I actually don't recommend you increasing budgets before seven day period but so increase it every seven days or more than seven days by about 25 percent so if it's a hundred dollars increase it by 25 dollars and then just kind of go on and so forth from that time period onwards this 25 percent every seven days keep it very simple only do that if again the product is actually a winning product but those are kind of the easy ways to scale a product another way to kind of scale the product is by simply increasing the bid now i'm referring to bid because i'm talking about standard shopping campaigns here because for whatever crazy reason let's assume that you are still trying to scale your products via standard shopping campaigns the ideal way to go about this is to basically increase the bid of that standard shopping campaign every seven days and same here don't do it before seven day period wait seven days 
and then increase bids if it's not spending the full budget every single day. So again, if it's spending the full budget every single day, what you want to do is you want to increase the budget. But if it's not, that's when you increase the bids. That's kind of one generic way to scale that standard shopping campaign. However, now let's move on to actually talking about the ROAS. Let's say, for example, you are still running Performance Max campaigns. You prefer to scale via Performance Max. What do you do in terms of the ROAS? How do you scale it? So let's assume that you actually ended up setting a target ROAS here and let's say it was 500%. But with a 500% ROAS, you're noticing that your $50 a day budget is only spending about $30 or maybe even $15 every single day. What do you do in that case? So what you actually want to be doing is you want to decrease the ROAS by 15% to 25% every seven days. So for instance, what you would need to do uh, in this case is uh, you would need to open up a calculator. I'm going to do that. And I want to know what 25% or maybe 20% of 500 is. So 20% of 500 is 100. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to decrease your target ROAS right there by 100 and put it at around 400%. And the reason why we are going backwards with scaling a campaign with a target ROAS is because the higher up you go, the lower the ad spend. Because now the audience list that needs to kind of qualify for this ROAS, it decreases every single time. So that's essentially why the higher up you go, the lower it's going to spend. So in order to scale it, daring, you got to kind of be more bold and just go a little bit lower. So in this case, 400, again, if you think it's too much of a drop, maybe change it to 450. But that's essentially what you want to do in order to scale with a target row I set. And that's also why I recommend don't even bother choosing a target ROAS in the beginning because, again, Google, if you have enough data, it's very smart. It's going to get you the right kind of customer. You don't need to tell it what to do and what not to do in terms of the ROAS. So that's really an easy way to scale with the bidding. If you have something set here, just lower it. If you don't, then that's great. All you really need to worry about is the budget. But even if you increase the budget and it's not spending the full amount, then that probably means there is something wrong with your products. Maybe there's not enough search volume out there. Maybe there's just too many competitors or you're not winning the auctions for whatever reason. So as a result, Google is not able to fully spend your budget. In that case, you got to work on your quality score. So that's essentially what I would recommend in terms of the budget. But those two are the basic kind of strategies when it comes to scaling your performance max campaign. And again, with standard shopping, you just increase your bids or budgets depending on where you are in the situation. Let's now kind of dive a little bit differently and let's talk about how to scale the new way, which I'm going to be using more and more often. So there's three different ways that I am actually looking to scale further besides those that I suggested in the beginning. And by the way, the ones that I mentioned in the beginning, if you want more details about them, I also have a lot of other videos on my channel where I go in depth into them, which you can check out. But these three other scaling methods are called scaling by devices, scaling by schedule and scaling by location. And by the way, these three kind of ways to scale, I'm also implementing on my clients, e-commerce brands under my Google ads agency, your marketing, which if you're doing around $30,000 or more per month in revenue, you need a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level. Go on to my website at yourromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can make that happen. But let's start off with the first newer scaling method, which is called scaling by devices. Now, in order for any of these three to work, however, you need to have some data with standard shopping campaigns. Hence, why I still even recommend you start doing your product testing with standard shopping campaigns. Because when you go down here to devices, what we want to kind of be looking at is this information right here. Very valuable information is going to tell us exactly what we need to know in terms of scaling. So when it comes to scaling, you can kind of go the generic boring ways of scaling with products. You can code the generic ways of scaling with performance max, but I mean, everybody and their dog does that. What's going to make you stand out of the crowd? And if you're like me, you always are looking for ways to be different, to stand out of the crowd. I mean, that's basically the whole reason why my e-commerce brands even became successful in the first place. But devices scaling is one way to really stand out of the crowd, really do something different. And the way to scale this is very easy. However, it is recommended you have a considerable amount of data within the campaign first before you try this out. So this campaign has $27,000 worth of ad spend. So it's good enough to kind of make decisions off of. And we can see CPCs over time, they became like dirt cheap. That's what happens when you do everything right, when you follow my videos and all of that stuff. But now what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at which devices basically did better than the others. And we want to kind of segregate each device out. So clearly right here, computers 
obviously crushed it, did much better than any other device out there by almost more than 2x. So what that means is we are going to be scaling computers separately from mobile phones and tablets and TV screens. So essentially what we want to be doing is we want to be starting a brand new campaign and you can probably do this with a performance max campaign or it might not even let you. It might be worth a try. So for example, if we go on over to performance max right here, we don't really see devices here. So it might actually not be even available for you to scale via devices with the performance max. However, that doesn't mean that you cannot scale with a standard shopping cam. And, and again, it's just worth a try because nobody else is doing a scaling method like this, which means you're going to have much more success if you actually go out and try to scale like this. So essentially what we are doing is we're segregating again out the main device, which worked versus those that didn't do as well and we want to scale them differently. So computers, we would launch it in its own campaign. You can set the budget at maybe $25 a day, maybe the same budget as here. So $50 a day. Make sure everything else is the same besides the device. So device, what you're going to do is in that campaign, you're just going to basically come in and you're going to change the bid adjustments. And what you're going to do is you're going to decrease all the other ones by 100. That's all you need to do to exclude all these other devices and only let one device run within that campaign, within that standard shopping campaign at least. So that's one kind of crazy way to scale, but we're not done there yet because you just scaled a computer in its own campaign. But now if you want to take things a bit further, what you can also do is look at those other devices which have similar return on ad spend to each other. So I mean, these ones very, very similar to each other. So obviously I want to scale both of these together instead of having one campaign for mobile phones, one for tablets, it's not necessary. So we're just going to go with mobile phones right there and then tablets, TV screens. It doesn't really matter, but I do recommend you just kind of shove it in to that campaign, which will have majority of the devices just because, you know, you want to add an extra and then run that campaign for just these devices alone and exclude computers from that campaign. So that's essentially what you need to do. And you're going to now have two different scaling campaigns, both standard shopping, both with everything the same, except the devices, very kind of unique way to scale. I don't see a lot of people using this, but I can guarantee you this is going to really do wonders when it comes to scaling, which brings me to the next kind of scaling strategy, which is through ad schedule. Again, whatever scaling methods I'm mentioning here, they might or might not be available with performance max campaigns. Again, definitely give it a try and see if they are available. I haven't really looked too deep into performance max because I've been mostly playing around with standard shopping for some of the products with these kind of strategies. So moving on now to the ad schedule. So if you go on the left side to ad schedule, go to day and hour right there, it'll tell you a lot of important information. Some of the information is going to kind of change the way you scale your Google ads campaign. So if we look right here, total of 1100 conversions within this campaign, and we do see there are some time periods where basically there are no conversions within that time period. So what we want to do is first of all, we want to look at what spent the most money and also if it got sales or not. And also next thing we want to do is rank it by conversions. See what got the most sales, because now what you want to do is you want to set some kind of criteria for these campaigns for the scaling phase. So essentially what I like to do personally is I like to look at all of the times and all of the days which have over five to 10 sales. So ideally you can choose either 10 or you can choose five. It's up to you, but either number works. But then what you want to do is you want to put all those specific days and hours run another campaign for only those days and those hours. So you will have another campaign created where it's only running for those days and those hours. And what you will have is another campaign or specifically this one. You can just leave it as it is for the winning days and hours and then create another campaign for the losing days and hours. So anything less than 10 conversions or anything less than five and exclude those days and hours here and just kind of two different campaigns running for different scaling days and hours because it's going to kind of take off the load from the campaign from having to appear for certain time periods because if we now kind of change this up we add a filter for conversions and we basically look at all of the days and hours which did not get us any sales we will be able to see exactly what's happening so less than one right there and then now we can rank it by cost so within that time period of all time so in basically three years now there were these days and hours with three years nothing was done in terms of conversions like 
$69 spend, 0.67 in sales, $65 spent right there on a Friday between 4 and 5 a.m. And in this two year time period, I didn't get any sales and anything below that. What you can also do in terms of scaling this further, if you don't want to go that strategy where you have two different campaigns is just come in and run this test right here, run this filter and exclude all of these days and hours right here. So essentially this campaign, it's still going to operate like normal, but it just won't run during this time period. And it can be very effective for you because now you're getting rid of those time periods where they haven't performed in a long period of time. And by the way, I do recommend you look at an all time view to get a better idea. But that's kind of a very cool way to schedule. Barely anybody scales this way. And again, it works. It's definitely worth a try. But that kind of brings me to the final scaling method, which is a newer scaling method I will be trying again more on the standard shopping campaigns area, because again, this information is only available via those general standard shopping campaigns. But if we go to locations now, we want to be able to scale via the location. So what we want to do is we want to click on United States or whatever country you have chosen, and then we can narrow it by different things. You can narrow it by region, states, congressional districts, etc., etc. We want to keep it simple. We're going to narrow by states because we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to look at the cost. We're going to look at all of the specific states which got spent the most money and got us conversion. So California, number one, Texas, Florida, New York, etc., etc. These are states all spending money. But if we add that same filter that we did earlier of conversions and make it again less than one, we can see within this three year time period of what has not worked. So within this three year time period, South Dakota and Wyoming are two states which have gotten me zero sales. And you can again kind of go a little bit crazier. Maybe you want to exclude all those states which got you less than three sales or anything like that. So for example, Delaware only got me one sale, spent $73. It's not really profitable per se, but Montana also same thing. $53 for South Dakota, Vermont, North Dakota, and Wyoming. So clearly these states are a no-go and these are six different states where the ads are still running for. So these are not small states. There's a lot of people combined living in these states. So that means because you haven't really excluded them, the campaign still tries its best to sometimes allocate a certain portion of your budget towards these states. So as you can see, that's going to interfere in your scaling. You don't want that to happen. So what you can do is strategy number one, exclude these states right here, just remove them completely and then just continue scaling via the other states. That's all you can do. Strategy number two, again, like I mentioned earlier, kind of set up a certain criteria of scaling only those states where they got you maybe more than five sales or more than 10 sales, whatever the number is, put them in their own campaign and put all the other states with less than five sales or 10 sales in their own losing campaign. And then kind of have all the same settings for all of the locations and just run it like that. That is a very ideal strategy as well that can work. But both of these strategies, to be honest, are gonna do the trick and help you scale in a new way. But that's pretty much it for the newer scaling strategies. Again, these three strategies I mentioned are not the only ones you should be relying on. Always try the original generic scaling strategies, which are the same essentially year after year. These are just three brand new ones I'm gonna be using to scale my Google Ads campaigns and my clients' Google Ads campaigns in 2023 and onwards. But again, if you're doing around $30,000 or more per month in revenue, you need a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level. Go on to my website at yourmarketing.com book a free call with me to see how we can possibly work together but if you found any type of value in this video destroy that like button destroy that subscribe button and watch these two videos right in front of my face which might help you with your journey and i will see you in my next video